This is a basic introduction to the aldol reaction. Uh, the aldol reaction um, involves um, the generation of an enol or an enolate, which then goes on to attack um, a carbonyl compound. I've, I've put these up initially just to show you that, um, just to go over again the uh, keto enol tautomerism. In acidic conditions, you get an enol and in basic conditions you get an enolate. Now the enolate is usually, so if it's LDA for example is a base, so it's the lithium diaspropylamide, the enolate cation is, is normally uh, lithium, okay? And that's, that's almost got a, a single covalent bond there. Now the reaction, so this, this is a prerequisite really, you have to go through this, these intermediates. So the reaction itself uh, involves um, generating the enolate first, or the enol first, and then reacting it with an aldehyde, otherwise you could get self-condensation reactions and things like that. So you've got to make sure that uh, um, this here, A, reacts with B, okay, and not A reacting with A. So that's just the order of addition things and how you generate your enolates, etc. So, that in mind, first thing we need to do, I'll just delete A and B, first thing we need to do is generate an enolate. So in this case we're going to generate an enolate from here, and yeah, I'll use enolates instead of enols, okay. So we use a strong base, LDA, just call it base, and we whip off a proton here, and that goes there, there like that. Okay, so the next stage, R1, R minus, R2, and this is always in equilibrium. Resonance form. I shouldn't say equilibrium. So in resonance with with this, and the resonance form really just depicts where the electron density lies. So it's it's highly concentrated on like carbon. It's highly concentrated on oxygen. Okay. So what happens now, if this is formed, and maybe we could trap it out, we can trap that out if you want to, uh, a lot of groups do that. But we've got our enolate here, we then attack, we'll use a, an aldehyde in this case, we then attack the aldehyde. Like this, so the electrons come straight back in, Take the aldehyde like that to give our product here, which we draw it on one. On two. And what I'll do now is I'll just draw the alcohol there that's formed. So we've added a second step in there so we've added some proton source afterwards okay and we'll call that R3 and I'll just draw the bond that's formed in blue not that easy to see but it's slightly different but hopefully you can see that um, so this is a new bond that's been formed here and forming new bonds is very important for organic chemistry because it leads to uh, more complex structures Etc. So that's the aldol reaction. Very, very basic introduction to the aldol reaction. But there is so much more um, to the aldol reaction than that. And I won't go into it in too much detail now. I just want to have a look at the. Um, well, I just want to basically just talk about these centres here that are formed um, before I end the tutorial. 
I encourage you to have a look at the other outdoor tutorials. So this is just a, an introduction really. Because they'll go into more details about the stereochemistry and all that kind of thing that goes on here. So while I mention stereochemistry, if you look here, we have a chiral center formed from this. So the um, orientation of R2, whether it's the E or Z orientation here for the uh, double bond, will make a difference to this. Also how it approaches the carbonyl, whether it approaches from the front or the back. And I'll go into that because the, the front and the back have got different names as well, which I'll go into in later on in tutorials. Um, and we know that it attacks at a certain angle, so I'll discuss those things as well. And if this, just just to end this here, we've got H there. Okay, if I draw a H on in red. Now this is a chiral centre as well. So we've also got a chiral centre there. So when we've got two chiral centres together, we get a mixture of diastereomers. So you can imagine, if I just draw on here, this R2 group here sticking out. If it's not drawn on, it means there is a, a hydrogen bond behind. And imagine this R3 group here is sticking out as well. And that, say, is going behind. I'll just draw hashes to show it's going in that direction. So you imagine a three dimensional structure like that. Now, obviously, we can get an enantiomer of that. So if you think about a mirror image across there. This is a mirror. So R2 would be here, and so on and so on, and R3 here, and now the proton would be sticking out of the front, yeah, and then you'd have your carbonyl there, oops, oh, one, and that would be going to the back, so it'd all be a reverse of that. So not only do you have R3 proton sticking out OH so not only do you have um, R3 could swap with your H to make a diastereomer you can also have enantiomers of those diastereomers so you do get a complex mix but I will go into more detail uh, in other tutorials and see how you can control that using either chiral catalysts here, imagine a Lewis acid stuck onto there, or even um, a chiral group stuck onto here to direct it in the direction that you actually want. And and that is when, uh, for me, organic chemistry gets really interesting because we can control the stereochemistry and the outcome of that too. And I'll also try and explain how we measure that using uh, spectroscopic techniques or, or a chiral separ separation technologies such as uh, LC and GC and stuff like that. Okay, so that is a basic introduction to the aldol reaction, which is the reaction of uh, an aldehyde or a, or a ketone uh, with another aldehyde or ketone giving a ketone and an alcohol. And that's the aldol reaction.